This is Miss Grace. She's here to teach you music. Sounds like a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> That's from the trailer of the new film, Discarded Things, with Sharon Lanier. Sharon's going to be joining Patty and me right now. Hey, it is the Ken Bailey Show. I'm your host, Ken Bailey, with Patty Tua Bailey. Hi, it's good to be here with you. <laughs> yeah, you too tonight on a 8 o'clock on uh, Central Standard Time in the U.S. of A. And uh, we've got another great show tonight. Yes, my friend Sharon Lanier, who does quite well in the acting business, especially in <laughs> film. And I'm anxious to find out how she got all those opportunities. Yeah, yeah, we got to watch a, a film she was in uh, just a couple nights ago. We're going to talk to her about yes. about that film. It was on Pure Flix, yes. which is uh, Dis was discarded things. Is discarded the name things. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. So um, yeah, we, we're going to have uh, a Sharon on to, to uh, discuss all kinds of things. She's a, a really good friend from uh, uh, a few days back, right? A few <laughs> years back, and uh, it'll be it'll be great to catch up with her. And we're going to do that after this word. Wash, wash, oh wash easy. Do you have that shirt that when you wear it, everyone knows it's laundry day? Does dealing with all those laundry products remind you of a chemistry experiment? Well, now there's a cheat sheet for your laundry day that lets you just tuck it and go. With Washies, you throw it in with the wash, keep it with the load to the dryer, and get earth friendly, fresh clothes that are clean, soft, and static free. So, take off the lab coat, put on that laundry shirt, and tuck it and go. Washies makes life a little easier. Okay, we've got my friend, Sharon Lanier. I've worked with her in the past, and we've had of several years since I've seen her. And so, this is uh, great to have you on the show today, Sharon. Oh, thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> it is good. Um, you know, I was telling Patty, we were, we were reminiscing about different things about you. And, and I remember um, I had the, the pleasure to get to work with you on Godspell at a little church. Yes. Yeah, that was so much fun. You were so good. And, and then to get to see you the other night, we, we turn on, on Pure Flix and there you are. It's the same person that I that we worked with all uh, a few years back. I know she didn't age. I know, I know. She's so pretty, and and just kind of beaming and all that. How did how did that project come about? Oh man, so I saw. Are you guys familiar with Actors Access in Houston? It might be Breakdowns LA. I don't know. I think that as East Coast and West Coast use something different but it's the same thing essentially anyway it's actors access for uh for us mm -hmm. um but it was posted on there that um karen abercrombie and she's the lady who played the old prayer warrior in the kendrick brothers mm -hmm. war room that she was doing a project and it was going to be her very first project it's a brand new production company um and so i was like huh that'd be interesting so i submitted um and then got the invitation to audition Great. Um, and then like after I got the invitation to audition and I was reading through the sides and everything, I was like, oh, this is going to be a good project. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I put my all into the audition. I thought it was like a great audition, but I didn't hear anything back. <laughs> oh, that's the worst, the, the waiting time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I want to say it probably was a good month that had Ooh. gone. And I was like, yeah, that's probably a no. Because normally when you do... Um, TV auditions you probably hear within that week or the next week. Film auditions you might hear within like two weeks. But if it's like an independent, I guess it can run the gambit. So this was independent. So she's the producer uh, of this. Yes. Okay. Um, there's other people who came alongside to help produce, but she was the, the main. And she 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 was involved in the writing of the script too, wasn't she? Did yeah. That? Uh huh. Exactly. Um, so I think she originally wrote it all, but then uh, enlisted the help of uh, one of her friends who also helped to co-direct, Tara Lynn Marcel. Mm -hmm. um, and I, uh, another person, I think Tom Grogan's, I think might've come on to help um, flesh it out, uh, all out. But, but the, the main, the skeleton, that's all Mrs. Abercrombie. Mm -hmm. 
So like um, after about a month when I was kind of like, okay, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Um, you know, just let it go. You know, when you want something, but mm-hmm. you're like, we're just let it go. Right. I was just on Facebook. This was, this was the most unconventional thing ever. I was on Facebook and then I get a message from Mrs. Abercrombie and she's like, welcome to the cast. <gasps> and, I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, am I reading this right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. I've never got like gotten a like an offer like through just Facebook and it Ooh. was it was so like I read the thing over like three times and then <laughs> such an exciting <laughs> moment. <Right? Whoa. laughs> we we just love the show. So and we hey guys out there uh if you get a chance to go to Pure Flix and it's called um What's the title, Patty? Discarded things. Discarded things, and uh, and you'll uh, you'll really you'll really be yeah, blessed. Sharon has a really good role in it too. She does, <laughs> she does, and uh, yeah, and there's a couple of twists and turns. But you know, it wasn't. We were kind of surprised a couple of times. We thought we had a couple of things figured out, and then it was like, oh no, wait! <laughs> I love that. No spoiling <laughs> stuff. Well, I, I didn't say what they were. I just said that, that yeah, there's a couple uh-huh. of twists and turns. Because they're like, oh, this is, no, oh, it didn't. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny because even reading the script, uh, like still watching it, I was still like really like engaged. Like I've already watched it like two and a half times. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. The other half, my husband came in and I was like, oh, I'm turning it off. <laughs> <laughs> but two and a half times, I'm like, that's really good. It's really inspirational and just. Yeah. Was there, a, was there a premiere that you got to go to? No. Oh. COVID. COVID. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so all funny. of that was in the works, and we were getting mm. really pushed hard. Um, she had some cities lined up where um, we were getting ready to go to the different cities and yeah. do, like, screenings, but then there was going to be a premiere for the cast. Oh. Uh, like, I want to say it was one or two weeks before the first city uh, when COVID um, – kind of shut down everything so oh, everything. Goodness. now when you do the on location do you have to provide your own transportation and uh where you're staying or do they take care of that because you're the big star <laughs> so every production is different mm-hmm. <laughs> but in this particular case they did take care of transportation and uh housing wonderful uh, the other thing was that was that all you, yeah yeah transportation and housing i don't know why i'm thinking of this there's something else but and then I, how, how it, long was the the shoot craft services that's what i'm always interested <laughs> in <laughs> you know there is an interesting thing about craft services that i actually learned on this particular shoot now oh, i was tv film for a while but i never knew this do you know why craft services is called craft services i no. don't it's because the food is for all the different crafts. Ah, okay. Now that is there, you have the cameramen, you have the yeah. actors. So you have mm-hmm. titles, makeup, costume. They're all part of the craft. So oh, that's so wonderful. Because I, I didn't. <laughs> I wondered if it had something to do with cheese or. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, we'll, right. we'll move on to a couple other things, but I, but I'm so fascinated by this. This is so fresh <laughs> in our minds, having just watched it. What. Um, was there a was there a, a day of shooting that was particularly challenging? Something happened that really- yes. Um, oh, and to answer your question, Patty, so we shot over. It was about a two week period, I, th- I believe. Hmm. Um, my character was only needed for a week, and then I came back the second week just to pick up a day or two. Hmm. Um, the most difficult day for me was the first day, <laughs> and it had nothing to do with like character or whatever, how I was going to emote or play a scene. It had everything to do with, I'm working with Mrs. Karen Abercrombie, who I had never worked with before, but I admired her. So mm-hmm. after War Room, I did a lot of research on um, those three main characters, uh, Karen Abercrombie, Priscilla Shire, and T.C. Stallings, and like fell in love with them. And so, um, I don't know, once I really like know a person, then like when I meet them, I'm like, oh. I'm working with them and a lot of people I work with I don't know because I don't watch a lot of TV so mm-hmm. I can set with a lot of stars but because I don't know your work and I chose not to research you I'm fine <laughs> Once I research you, I'm like oh so the first day just getting past the like ah uh, <laughs> was probably um the more difficult day and I remember too because it was like the, the one of the first actually one of the easiest scenes um I remember like stumbling some lines and I'm like why 
get yourself together. Like, like, like. <laughs> <laughs> but after moving past that, it only took like that first scene that we shot to get past it. Um, I was pretty good. Did you, uh, did, did she give you any, um, any advice or anything that you'll take on with you beyond the project uh, besides the friendship or the experience? Um, I don't know about any direct advice, mm -hmm. but like talking with her and working with her, um, just, um, I guess reconfirming like the importance of integrity in this business right. and right. the importance of being able to turn down roles that you know won't do anything for mm -hmm. anybody or that'll pr really bring people down. Um, you know, so we've had conversations um, about that. Um, that's probably a key thing. And I don't know, I guess just the, um, encouragement to keep going and I say for people who want to do faith-based films and I think we kind of have had the same role uh, world road I should say in that respect um because we had I remember us having a conversation about how it was so hard for her to break into the uh faith-based industry and definitely hard for me to break in I remember um like I couldn't even get a pinky toe in so I was doing um tv film and I was getting like cast for like secular projects and they weren't like, they were decent. So they weren't like um, compromising, but still, it was still like, this is not like my passion. I got mm -hmm. my passion. So how come these doors are open and, and these doors are closed when I know you put the vision in my heart? Um, but you know, it's all in his timing. And so um, just being able to stay focused, uh, keep surrendering to him and just know that in the end, the doors will open when, when he says it's time for them to open. Now, do you have an agent, or do you just search these out yourself? Yeah, both. Both. I know. It's, it's interesting. Um, so I have an agent in the Southeast, and I also um, just picked up an agent in uh, Florida r right at the end of last year. COVID hit, so I haven't done much with her. But <laughs> <laughs> um, And then um, a faith-based agent, but she's great. So anybody in the faith-based uh, industry who, who – uh, wants to really do more faith-based projects. Uh, the name of uh, that agent is, is uh, Treasure Coast Talent, and her name is Jean Wanger. So Treasure Coast Talent, Jean Wanger. Um, but my Southeast agent and uh, Treasure Coast Talent, those are the two that I mainly book with. I book more with my Southeast um, agent because I'm here, and so I can um, just jump up and do a commercial or an industrial, like in a heartbeat. And then we have a lot of TV film here, so I can, you know, you would, they play a role in a TV show or something. Yeah, like Atlanta is a great place to be because you've got so much going on there. Yeah, it's insane. And when I moved here, it was not like that. Uh, mm. Ember, you made it happen. <laughs> yeah, Sean's so, here. We can go now. I know. So you, 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 you and Tyler <laughs> hit the Starbucks uh, about once a week, or you see? Yeah, Tyler like all the time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I've actually, I've done some work with Tyler Perry, but only uh, extra uh, background stand-in work when I first moved to the city, which was like 11 years ago. But I have, I've never had a speaking line with Tyler Perry, but this is an interest interesting story in itself. And just tell me if I'm talking too much. Never. Oh, I can go. But, like, <laughs> but I remember, so I was in Orlando after I left Houston with you beautiful people. <laughs> I went back to Orlando, Florida, and I started working... Um, like the the market there and that market there is basically industrial commercials and then uh entertainment parks mm -hmm. so disney at the universal studios uh dinner theater and i remember like one night um we were there and one of the actors that i was working with at universal studios i think it was captain america he was like oh i've been here for like 10 years and i said to myself oh no like, like, <laughs> at the time and I was like no 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 this is not what I want to do I can't get trapped here and so I had a conversation with my husband I was like babe we got to get out of the city I can't do this type of work forever and so we thought about LA and New York but those places were too expensive too far from the family so we're like well let's just try Atlanta now Tyler Perry back to him he was the only one in Atlanta at the time like that was it and we're like yeah let's just do it you know that's you know it's just the next state over from florida let's just do it we'll try to work with him cool yeah so i came here never really got like 
solid work with Tyler Perry. Um, but like three years after I moved here, the market expanded like right. no one ever thought it would. And so it was like the perfect move. God's timing. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And if I would have come here later, it would have been harder to get an agent. Because when I came to get my agent, I didn't even have a reel. So no sample of like TV film work. I had only done theater mostly. And, mm -hmm. that, um, and it was just like, yeah, I was, they still welcomed me in uh, without the, the real TV film experience. Uh, but now that's so hard to do. Like you probably need a reel. <laughs> oh, oh, bless you. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what's, what's next? Where, where, where are we headed? Wow. So we have some projects coming down the pipe. Um, some that I've already filmed that will be coming out this year. So one, another one on Pure Flix um, in October called The Dark. That's a, um, an episodic. It's a five series show. Um, I'm only in two of the episodes. Man, I can't remember which one. I think it's two and three. Don't quote me. I have to look at them, but like, but one of the episodes, I'm only in like the last three minutes of that episode, so I almost don't even count that. It, my story will unfold in the next episode, mm -hmm. um, but it's a really, really good, I haven't seen anything like it, so I'm excited to see how it all pans out, but reading it on paper, it's a phenomenal um, script written by Chip Rossetti, uh, Rossetti Productions, but it's about the end times. Ooh. Um, but just the way he crafted the story, I'm like, I haven't seen an end time story like this. And especially wow. in episode. Oh, cool. I'm looking forward to seeing how that all played out. We tried to watch you last night on the Investigative Discovery uh, channel, and we couldn't get it because we didn't have the, the right television network to connect to. <laughs> so, <laughs> so tell us about that one. Yeah. Yeah. So the Investigation Discovery uh, channel, the ID channel. Um, the name of that episode, well, the name of the show is called Your Worst Nightmare. And I know that sounds like, oh, that's like so bad. That's, that's just like a horror flick. It's not a horror. <laughs> <laughs> so Your Worst Nightmare is a show um, that takes true life stories and then um, reenacts them. Mm. And so in the episode last night, the actual episode that I did is called Root of All Evil. And so in that episode, I play um, the main character, um, Sheila Dates, who um, she's uh, pretty much best friends with her adult daughter, um, and then tragedy strikes. So in the episode, you watch like what happens and, you know, if they overcome the situation or not. Um, I don't want to give away the storyline. Sure, but right. Basically, uh, what it was, and uh, it's funny, Patty, because the uh, like I put on my Facebook, yeah, we're gonna watch the show tonight. But then, like, I didn't even have the channel, so like, <laughs> 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 I was like, no, <laughs> no, we were trying to like, oh, oh wait, yeah, we could get there. We just couldn't, uh, you know, we it had a little key symbol, and we couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't watch it because our the key. we we have a. <laughs> yeah. Amazon Fire Stick, and it just didn't um, didn't allow it. So yeah, you have to have the subscription to be able to unlock that key. So I realized that. So people are commenting on Facebook while the thing is playing, and I'm like, I can't watch it. So then a good friend of mine, she was like, you know what? I'll lend you my password. So I got to watch it. <laughs> like, like, oh, all right. I know it's the sweetest what, thing what, ever. What um, are you doing <laughs> with uh, because of COVID and because so many people are doing what we're doing right now is uh, online meetings and things. Are, have you done any acting um, on online? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. I know. This is crazy. It's so such a new thing that we have going on that I, I guess could be beneficial. Like, I'm kind of resisting it, but at the same time, it's it's um, helpful because um, you don't have to, like, drive out and mm -hmm. your schedule doesn't have to be as tight. But I just... Um, Finished up the project uh, a couple of weeks ago with the Alliance Theater, which is a big equity house here in Atlanta. And I actually had stopped doing, th I, I probably haven't done theater in a decade or whatever. Hmm. But um, this particular project is called Sit In, and it's basically about standing up for your rights. Hmm. So um, when they invited me to audition, I had, I had that thought. I was like, it's been like 10 years. But I was like, you know what? I think it's time to step back into theater. Let's do it. Hmm. So and got the part. I was happy to go back on stage. And then COVID. Oh. <laughs> COVID. And, and no equity theater is <laughs> working now. Yeah, yeah. Right. So what they did, which I think was phenomenal, and it, it's a kid's show. 
So what they did um, was they decided to turn it into an animation project. Oh. oh, I know. And so we did all the rehearsals online, Zoom. And then we went into the studio a couple of weeks ago to lay down the final tracks. And so now it's in post-production. So that should be coming out really soon. And it's a really, really awesome story. I know it's for the younger audience, but I think the adults will benefit as well. Just talking about standing up uh, for your rights. So it, it stems from the sit-in movement um, from the 60s. Mm-hmm. Lunch, those lunch counters uh, sure. right. you know, when African-Americans had to fight. you know, And so it stems from that. Um, but it takes it and twists it into where young kids nowadays can and take that principle and apply it to whatever um, they know is right. Oh, I think that's so great uh, because um, Ken and I were in the 60s when everything was happening, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. we've seen all the change that came from that and thought, oh, it's all over. And like you and I were friends, and I didn't think anything about it, and I didn't Uh ever uh, from my white privileged um, place in life, uh, never thought that you were having a rough life because it was all over in the 60s. And mm-hmm. we're finding out that's not true, that mm-hmm. today it's just as evident. So ha- what's it like um, in your life today and, and how are you dealing with these things? Yeah, I mean, I think um, there's always these little, I guess, subtleties that I mean, I guess I can't say every African American would come across, but probably does. <laughs> and we're learning that because we're but. just ignorant of that. You know, we think, oh, we're cool. We, you know, we these are our friends. We hang out with them, and 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 we don't realize that you've got an internal struggle. That yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I could even throw it back to like just being in the industry, just to keep it mm-hmm. simple. So like. Um, we may go on set and um, like everybody's getting their hair and makeup done and we are too, but it's like the hair person doesn't know how to deal with ethnic hair. Mm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like like just little things like that. And it's like, you know, I think we could do better in that department. Um, um, But, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like um, my, like my, my husband or like my, uh, male cousins have experienced a lot more than I have as a female. Uh, mm-hmm. just, you know, um, I, I don't know, you know, I don't really know what it is. I think it's, it's crazy. Um, but I don't know. I think it's just a mentality that I think people think that, that they're not judging people, but at the same time they are. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I don't know how to explain it. Um, it's just when, whenever you're def- Fences go up just because you see a person that looks a certain way. Um, that's a judgment, like whether you know it or not. Like, and so I know. Yeah, I think I think the current events are just making us more aware of. Mm-hmm. of you know, we were just blissfully in our white privileged ignorance, and I think it's <laughs> helping us become more aware. Um, even though it's it's a rough time and and dividing the country and mm-hmm. um, so. Yeah, I think it's a good thing because it's opening uh, conversation up again. Um, And and I think there's deeper conversations this time. So I think that this time there's a better chance for healing as opposed to just being kind of surfacey about it. Like, okay, we'll give you your equal rights. And then it just stops right there. Yeah, because we never had a conversation about it before. This is the first time to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, So I think that will help. There's a, a great film. Um, another film I was a, a part of that will release. It's supposed to release next week in select theaters, I believe. Mm. I, I'm not sure the t- if the timing have, has changed or not. Um, but it's called Son of the South. Mm, yeah. It is. It is it's uh, a film about Bob Zellner, who his grandfather was a member of the Ku Klux Klan, but then he switches to the side of equality. Um and so this particular movie is literally about that switch. Like that's all the movie focuses on is that switch. And so you get to see some of the internal um, struggles. And I think that's going to help um, as well 
um, especially because we're in the climate right now, to open up eyes a little yeah. more. What, um, what time period is it set in? The, the 60s. It is in the 60s? So, yeah. yeah. And I play uh, Rosa Parks in that film. That's so great. <laughs> what a great role. <laughs> Executive produced by Spike Lee and directed by Barry Alexander <gasps> Brown. Oh, that's Oh, that's fantastic. You got that wrong. <laughs> wow. That's, well, yeah, yeah. that's really exciting. Um, yeah, to, uh, you know, just to put a button on the, um, on the whole thing, I mean, we've, like Patty said, especially for me, who's older than Patty is, um, <laughs> the 60s were a, a real time of, of revelation and, um, uh, yeah, lots of things happen there. And, but, you know, the odd thing as a Christian and a, a church goer, and somebody that deals in um, in the believer arts, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you think you'd like to think in all areas mm -hmm. that you're kind of immune from a lot of that. And um, uh, I wrote a book called Dancing with Baptists uh, that deals with um, the uh, uh, Southern Baptist uh, uh, saying uh, an, giving an apology to the mm -hmm. African American community. Uh, for their history of, uh, of both uh, neglect and looking the other way, but also very overt things that, that mm -hmm. the, the uh, Southern Baptists did, including their inception and their whole mm -hmm. creation. And uh, you'd think that happened in, you know, maybe 67 and 68, and it was in 96 when they actually, in fact, it was in, I believe it was in Orlando or Jacksonville. It was in Florida. When at one of the conventions of the Southern Baptists when they actually made the apology. And the African-American gentleman that uh, accepted the, uh, the apology uh, for, on behalf of the African-American community, and that was an odd thing because, you know, he didn't feel, you know, who am I to accept for, for mm -hmm. Sharon or anybody else. And, but his, um, if you get a chance to look at his speech, I, unfortunately, I, I'm old and I don't remember his name. But uh, <laughs> but he uh, his his acceptance speech of the way he accepted uh, the apology is just a really really neat piece of writing. Um, so yeah, I think it's a more of a heart issue, which I think is why um, the race issue was evident in the church as well. Um, but if we could really like tap it to, um, like Philippians uh, two and three talks about like um, like valuing others above mm -hmm. yourself. So if yeah. we really start, you know, taking that to heart, and not just saying it and making it a brain thing, but literally a heart thing, um, we'll we'll be just fine. We just have to do it yeah. <laughs> and lean on lean on God to help us to actually right. do, not just think that we can just go out and do it by ourselves. But we'll be right back after this word. Are you missing your visits to the nail salon? Sure, you can do them. But the pampering and ease is just not the same, is it? Well, why not make it a little easier and pamper yourself with your own grip and tip to give you a hand, an extra hand. It holds your polish securely and is just something for yourself and your nails while you hold on during this time. Grip and Tip, helping you hold on. Directing, writing, is that in your future? Directing, maybe. That's see. I, so I haven't. Uh, well, outside of like little tiny, tiny projects, I haven't really directed. But I, I want to. I think I want to. Mm -hmm. uh, writing, writing. I would like to, but it's definitely not my strong suit. So, well, it's yeah. great talking. Producing too. I think I, I'm. Um, oh yeah, I can see that. Tackle sure. Producing. Sure. So I, I also um, work part-time as a registered nurse, postpartum registered nurse. And um, so postpartum for people who don't know, it's when you deal with mothers and babies right after they deliver the baby. Right, right. And I've been doing that for almost five years, but after December, I think that's it. I think I'm going to put that down. So when yeah. I put that down, I think I'm going to pick up the producer's hat before I even try to do directing. And, uh, oh. uh, we're so excited about the life that you're leading, uh, and what you're, how God's providing these opportunities for you to be, to use your exercise that those talent muscles that you have, um, 
and uh, and to fulfill your calling. Yeah, that's the exciting yeah. part. Yeah, when God's right. called you to do something, and He gives you the opportunities to do it. That's what's so great. Yeah, and to, and to look oh, up man. on Facebook and see that you're actually been cast in a in a show. I, I, it, and she's going to be Rosa Parks. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, listen, I like to say something to that, too. So I sure. talked a little bit earlier about, um, you know, um, definitely, you know, watching God open doors. But can I just say, like, um, up until two years ago, I felt like I was pushing, 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 um, like, so hard to try to get to where I wanted to be or where I thought I should be. Um, and it was frustrating. And so uh, in 2019, uh, we did, uh, I had a little small uh, Bible study group and we did what we called um, word of the year. And so the word of the year that I picked was rest. Mm. And I really like, you know, we talk about the brain and the heart it was like, I can't just let this be a brain thing. Cause I know I'm supposed to release it all to God. I know I'm supposed to rest in him. I know that, but I was like, ah, it's just gotta be a heart thing. And so I did a lot of praying and a lot of releasing. And I tell you what, that I mean, doors open like crazy. I'm not even exaggerating. So I went from like having a gig maybe once every three months or so um, to like literally one, at, at least one a month, like literally mm -hmm. just kept coming back to back to back. Um, and some of those gigs, like I literally saw his hand involved. Um, and actually, let's just go back to the Son of the South gig with that particular gig rosa parks was, was supposed to be a big name there's a lot of big names in the project and rosa parks was supposed to be a named actress and the director told me um and i asked him to because when i got to set i was like hold on a minute like how did i get in the mix of this <laughs> you know, i asked them i literally asked them i was like so barry how did you pick me to play rosa parks he was like oh your audition was great i was like yeah, I kind of know the business. I'm like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> and he's like, okay, I'll tell you the truth. So he said the big name was attached to play Rosa Parks, um, but then her schedule wouldn't allow for it. So they had to search more locally. We shot in Montgomery in Atlanta is kind of local to Montgomery. So that's how I got it. And he was like, and to be honest, on top of that, your name came in at the bottom of a long list. Mm. I was going through watching auditions and he was like, oh, they were okay. They're okay. And he said, I got to you. And he was like, that's her. That's her caster. So listen, so they cast me. And then two days later, so no contract had gone out. This was all word of mouth. Like they, they like offered me the position through email or whatever and phone, but no official documents. So two days later, after all that went down, the big name came back and said, I cleared my schedule. I can do it. And he was like, Ah, that's okay. We have somebody now. Now, here's the significance in that. If you know a lot about TV film, they recast people all the time. You can literally be on set in like your wardrobe trailer and they'll come up to you and be like, eh, we're going a different way. Mm -hmm. They'll pay you because at that point you signed the contract and you're there, but you're cut out of the, the, the episode or the movie or whatever it is. So the, to me, like that big name coming back and him saying, now I'm still going to stick with Sharon. I was like, that is a God thing. Oh, yeah. God thing. Like, there's no way I could even, like, make that happen. And I have so much respect for that director, too, for, for following that. Too. Yeah, that's great integrity on, on the director's part. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Little things like that. There's so many other stories I could tell, but just stuff like that. And so it all just goes back to rest. And in, in Psalms 127, it talks about, uh, it says, In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, but he grants sleep. To those he loves. Mm. Just rest. Yeah. Just rest. Oh, so you're still going to do, you know, faith without works is dead. You're still going to work, but you're not going to slave over that. You, 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 right. You're going to release it. You're going you're gonna to work peacefully. And so, I don't know. I, I always feel like I like to share that. Oh, um, yeah. I know where I came from with all of that push, 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 and it just is not worth it. Well, that's exciting. Thanks for sharing that part. Yeah, yeah. What a great story. How if um, if folks would want to um, to see um, to follow you, or uh, is there somewhere? Is, do you have a website? Do you have an email address? Do you have something where people could um, keep in touch with what's going on? Yeah. Right now, um, my Facebook actors page. I have two Facebook pages. Um, so one is just Sharon Lanier, S-H-A-R-O-N-N-E-L-A-N-I-E-R. -E -E but then the other one, where I, I post all of my acting engagements, that's 
Sharon Lanier, the actress. So you put the actress. Okay. Lanier. All right. So if you go, guys, if you go to the Ken Bailey Show dot com, uh, we'll have a link on there for Sharon. So with both those uh, links, so you can go and, and check it out and and see um, see what's happening in this, um, this talented talented actress. This is life. And uh, well, music. Where's music in your life? <laughs> Why do you bring up music? That's I don't know. I just I just kind of interesting. Okay. <laughs> it's always interesting you bring it up because I, I I've always felt like uh, I, I'm not that good in music and but projects will come up where they're like you need to sing and I'm like oh. <laughs> in fact, Patty, you might not even remember this, but that uh, what was the through the looking glass? Oh, <laughs> it's one show together. And uh, the the track was off. You know, there was like different tracks for the songs that we sang in that thing. And, and one of the tracks, I don't know what happened, but it was not the right key. It was like a different track. I don't know how it got in the mix. And I remember singing and it was so, it was Alice. And it was so awful. And I was like, I'm so glad these are kids because this is so embarrassing. Like while I was singing it, I was thinking this is embarrassing. But like, like <laughs> do you remember that, Patty? I don't even know if you remember, remember that. that but... Well, good for you because I remember. <laughs> but like, <laughs> but like, <laughs> all that to say is because uh, quite often I'll get requests where where they want me to sing. I am now in the middle of voice lessons. All so right. okay. for you, see where that goes. That's, That's why I was like, I how do you know about question. music? Yeah, I know. That's uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I, I that won't surprise me that that's a, a something new. There, you know, you there could be a um, a, a, a singer in your future that uh, you have to play. You know, I, yeah, <laughs> I could see that happening. Yeah, it's just wonderful you're out there and, and getting to go on so many calls and uh, um, and all that. So next time you're in Starbucks with Tyler, tell him I said hi. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he was just, uh, I just read that he, he's just become the most recent Hollywood billionaire. Yeah, I saw yeah. that too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, I just, again, you mentioned my name. And, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, how, can, uh, how can our folks pray for you? Um, just wisdom. I think that's the biggest thing. I just want to be wise um, and discerning about the, the steps that I'm taking. Um, especially because like I have a family involved. So I never want to like um, do anything that would jeopardize, you know, our relationship, you know? So I think that's probably the main thing. Mm -hmm. It worked for Solomon. I think that's as good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Thank you, Sharon, for being with us today on the Ken Bailey show tonight with Patty Tool Bailey. It's great having you with us. Great seeing you again. Oh, great talking it was awesome to be here. Thank you. All right, you take care. It was really great talking to her, wasn't it? She's oh, I know. It's when people move away, we lose contact. But with Facebook, we really shouldn't. There's, you know, so much contact there, and that's really how I've kept up with her. Yeah, we're so blessed on the Ken Bailey Show with Patty Tool Bailey to uh, to get to catch up with so many of our friends. We're just we're so fortunate to have so many believer artists. And um, if you go to the Ken Bailey Show dot com. Uh, you'll get to see who's going to be on our show in, in the upcoming weeks. And uh, we're, we're starting the 12 weeks of Christmas, Patty. The 12 weeks of Christmas. Starting on the 20th of, uh, of September. And uh, we begin the 12 weeks of Christmas. And on the I know 12th it, week of Christmas. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> that's what we're doing. And uh, I won't sing, I promise. It's, okay. uh, it's, been a, it's been a pretty rugged year. Uh, but it's time to uh, to get ready to celebrate uh, as as we see the end of the year coming, and the newness that uh, is reflected in the celebration of the birth. So, guys, we uh, we want you to come back every time we're on the air and uh, and start the celebration with us. We're starting it a little early, I know that's true, but uh, but for 12 weeks we're going to look at the different things that are coming up. 